Good morning, folks. We've got a lot of discovery out of Japan today, including large stellar explosions. We've got plasma physics in space on deck as well as we begin with our star over at spaceweathernews.com. And we find the last 24 hours without much in the way of plasma motion or eruptive behavior. The southern coronal hole is swinging in to face Earth. Its solar wind is expected to be minor to moderate, but its shape may offer multiple sector boundaries. Meanwhile, the solar wind at Earth is quiet this morning. There is a bit of variability here, but it's all relative. It's entirely within normal, calm, quiet range, which is why the KP index never got out of the green despite the plasma stream variability. On to the weather. The pattern shift is going to flop the cold and heat from east to west by the weekend, but for now, it has been a chilly reminder of what largely evaded the east for much of the winter. Almost feel like they would have rather gotten the cold out of the way months ago. So let's go to the April U.S. climate report. Very much a below average month of temperature as a country, with the distribution of temperature and precipitation here. For the three blue and red temperature maps, it's max temperature top right, minimum nightly temperature bottom left, with the average top left, and precipitation is in the bottom right. Link is below. Let's go next to stellar explosions, and we're starting only 16 light years away at one of the closest stars to us, and they just noticed a super flare from it. The Red Dwarf was studied by that same amazing combination group of the Japanese Astronomical Society and solar physicists from Colorado, just up the road here, and they bring it in at about 20 times stronger than the 1859 Carrington event. Such a strong flare from our sun would send us back to the pre-electricity world as every transformer would blow and most wires would melt. The star is located at approximately our distance from the galactic center, but it's in Leo, nearly straight north of us in the galactic disk. Up next, you wouldn't think we were discussing stellar explosions at first here, Japan again at the Ryugu asteroid. Thing is, it's got sunburn, red cooking from the sun, which they are thinking means it must have gone close to the sun at some point. Thing is, nothing about its orbit suggests that's ever been possible. So what's the other way you get a sunburnt asteroid? The sun unleashes a monster, and remember, in the instability or accretion-based micronova scenarios, there are asteroids produced. What if Ryugu is from the sun? Now imagine a micronova that fails, something that doesn't blow out, just sort of produces dust and haze in the upper stellar atmosphere and around it. That's really what it looks like on Betelgeuse, and it's though a major cloud was ready to be ejected but just sort of stuck around and dissipated. Many of us were hoping for a brighter, more exciting show in the sky, might end up disappointed. Last but not least, so what's so special about this region of space? Well, let's go ahead and look in radio waves. Hmm, that's interesting. And now how about x-rays? Well, that's not lining up at all. Let's toss them all in here for the composite image and see what they say is happening. They say there's an X-ray emission bridge of hot gas linking the two galaxy clusters that collided and kept right on going through each other, but which stripped that envelope of material to the exterior between them. They say it's bent because that random active galactic nucleus and radio waves is firing a mega jet right into the gas and causing it to be pushed as such. Well, such a jet is an injection of electromagnetic energy. When we've seen these plasma bridges act like current sheets, if not collimated plasma currents before. And so recall that adding electromagnetic energy to a plasma current will make it kink and bend. And so their purely kinetic explanation given by the article does beg a bit of work from the plasma physics realm. Folks, we greatly appreciate your support. Last night, our video was about your story. You guys are amazing, and I'm not sure all of you understand everything you've accomplished over the last nine years. Why don't you go check out how awesome you are with last night's video called The Suspicious Observers. The last three morning shows were vital as well, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. I have to recommend catching up if you missed any of those as well. We've got your wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.